morning, amazing grace. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Lord, let's uh, lift up this moment, Lord, that uh, we hear your word today and that we're able to use it as we walk the streets today, Lord. We get inspired by your word and want to go fellowship with people, Lord. Find the devil from being here. Dispatch your angels to hang out with us. Fill this room with the Holy Spirit, Lord, as we listen to your word and have it etched on our hearts. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. All right. We are going to Luke chapter 10. Luke 10. Start in verse 21. In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and he said, Thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Father's, who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. What a time and an era to have that accepting Christ into your heart that you're able to see the kingdom of heaven, you're able to see the works here on earth of the things that uh, Christ does for us, right? I was listening to someone this morning, and it's it, he was saying how God's love doesn't change for us at all, right? So no matter what we do, God still loves us the same. He'll love us the same tomorrow, no matter what we do. He'll love us the same forever, no matter what, right? So we said last week, uh, am I blessed if a family member is healed from an illness? Am I blessed if they're not healed? Right? I'm just as loved whether someone is healed or not healed. Right? The person who needs the healing is just as loved whether they're healed or not healed. Yet sometimes we fall into the trap that, oh, well, I'm sick. I must be doing something really wrong. God must not love me today. Well, he blessed you with eternal peace, <laughs> eternity in heaven. What more do we want? Well, we want more. We always want more, right? Do we go and offer what we would like to have? Do we offer grace and mercy to people that we may not want to give that to? Do we see people and offer a hand out to the things that are going on in life that they may be in some kind of distress? Where, where do we lie in the forgiveness realm. Are there things that we forgive and things that we don't? We just love no matter what we do, right? So we're going to go to verse 25. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, he's not just saying it. This is a lawyer who knows the laws and they live by the laws. They don't understand that Jesus Christ makes the laws go away. He's challenging him to the laws. He's given him, he's given him almost a, uh, an ego, like, I know the laws, so you better answer this correctly. Right? You better answer this correctly. And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? Right? So he challenges him right back. And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. 
And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Right? Do we actually live by that? How much do you love the Lord? He loves you exactly the same all the time. How much do you love him? Is everything about him or is everything about you? Does you do you get up in the morning and say, I'm going to see what I can do for myself today, or am I going to get up and see what I can do for God today? Right? There's something I would like to do for the Lord today because I know he's going to do so many things for me. And the things that he's going to do for me is he's going to put me in heaven. Eternal peace. Right? Eternity. What an awesome... I don't know anybody that's offered me peace. Right? Out in the world today. I've lived on the streets where people have walked by while I, I was in alleyways. They didn't want to go down there. They didn't want to see me. Right? What kind of people does he want us to be? Right? Love God with all your heart and all your strength. Right? All my strength. My mind should be set and focused on God. Right? As soon as I take my mind off God, things start to go south. I start worrying about, am I going to have enough money? Am I going to have a place to live? Am I going to have enough food? Am I going to be able to pay for the bills that I've decided to create in my life? I, 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 I. Oh, God, you have it all covered. And I may lose my car today because God's okay with it. And I need to be okay with it. There's something that he will put in place of whatever it is. I meet so many young men out here that may have just gotten out of jail. And they got a bicycle. And they are so excited that they have this bicycle. I'm upset because I don't have a car that doesn't work the proper way. We went to get air in the tires of the car today. Put a dollar fifty in the pump and the pump didn't work, right? It's like I'm frustrated. They got a bicycle, right? Come on, where am I? Am I grateful for what I have? Do I love my neighbor? Love my neighbor as I love myself. Wow. Do I want my neighbor to have what I have? Would I be willing to give him something of mine that would just fulfill what God would want me to give for him? Right? Or am I so worried about myself? Right? Is it all about me? But he, but he desired, verse 29, but he desiring to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Wow. What a question. Right? Because to him, the lawyer, the man of God, right, knows that my neighbor is only someone who's exactly like me. Right? Now we talk about iron sharpens iron because that's who keeps us going when we're in times of trouble, right? We meet with fellow Christians. We meet with people that aren't using, drinking, or drugging, or doing the things so that we can get into that realm, right? But who is my neighbor? Is the guy down the corner store drunk? When I go down there to get a soda, is that my neighbor? Should I care for them? Should I have strength for them if they don't have it? That's my neighbor. Your neighbor's whoever's standing beside you at the moment in time. That's your neighbor. The person who is making you upset in your life is your neighbor. God's love is unending. It's exact. It's the same and it's forever. Is yours towards your neighbor. Is someone that you know in distress, big friend would be like, there's some people in my life that I know if I bump into them and they have a flat tire, I'm driving by. I just am. I can't stop. Christ stops for everybody. Right? Christ stops for everybody. Would I? I don't know. I've been challenged that way many times. What's he say here to do? Verse 30. Jesus replied, and this is about who's my neighbor, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Right? Now, I know... When I was a kid going into Boston with my parents, there would be guys in the alleys that just were all beat up, which then became me, right? 
and my parents would be like, they'd pull me in tighter. You don't want to go near that way. But you don't know why they're in that alley. Could it be someone that was attacked and beaten up? Or is it the, the low-life guy who's been drinking too much and destroyed his life because he, he wanted to, right? Now, by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed on by to the other side, across the street. He seen the guy across the street. Have you ever had that in your heart where you just walked across the street because you didn't want to go by that person? I've had people cross the street when they've seen me. It's not a good feeling. I remember one time, I was a little kid. I was 14, 13, 14 years old. I'm standing on the side of the road. There's a set of railroad tracks that I'm standing beside. So the cars go by, I have to slow down and go over the railroad tracks. And there was this couple and their daughter. And the, the mother and father are sitting in the front seat and the daughter's in the back seat. And the mother looks over at me and squeezes her nose and reaches in the back seat and locks the door. As they drive by me on the street, I just laugh so hard. It was incredible, but that's what people do, right? Is that us? Is that us today? Do we look at someone and go, oh man, that's, I just can't help that person, right? I can't make a phone call that might help them. I can't go and process something with them that might help them. If they show up here, do I say, listen, you're too high. We can't get you anywhere. We can't help you. Come back when you're clean and sober. Is that what we do? Is, are we good neighbors by doing that? Verse 32. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, and passed by on the other side. Now the guy goes back on the other side. But a Samaritan, right, a Samaritan, a common guy, a common guy is that the Jews aren't supposed to fellowship with, they're not supposed to go near them, they're not, these are guys that, you know, they're on the other side of the tracks, right? We don't, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Oh. He went to him and bound up his wounds and poured oil and wine on him, right? Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Right? He took, he cut off his own animal, right, and put him on to bring him somewhere to safety. Right? Will we put someone in the car and take him somewhere? You know, I remember working at the detox when I first started working there. I had this, I had this awesome Cadillac Coupe de Ville. It was beautiful. I rode around and I picked up people and drove them to detox. They were full of everything you could possibly have on your body. I didn't care. That was me. They were me. I, they needed help and I was able to, the Lord provided me with a caddy to pick them up and we had a blast taking people. My first date with my wife, we went to this amusement park, met a man and brought him to detox. That was our first date. That's what we do, that's what we did. Right? And we continue on doing that these days, right? And the next day, he took out two denaro, the narrow, okay, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, take care of him, and whatever you, whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back, right? So now he has trust with the innkeeper. He's brought someone who the innkeeper probably wasn't real happy about having brought into his place, right? Nobody really is saying, what happened to you, right? The Samaritan didn't say, who are you and how did you end up this way? Are you a thief? Are you a beggar? Are you no good? He asked them none of those things. Christ doesn't ask us that. But we ask that of everybody we know. You can't be here. You can't be this. Right? None of that was asked. Which of these three do you think provide to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. He said to the one who showed his mercy, he said, the one who showed his mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Do we walk that walk, right? That's a hard walk. The path is narrow for us when we do that, right? How often we're so tied up in all the things that we don't have in our own life, that we don't often have the opportunity to see the greatness that we can have by helping someone out. 
So many times we fall into that, right? It's just what Christ wants us to do and be. Be loving and caring. It's so hard to be loving and caring in today's world because the attack is on from all sides. Every person, place, and things. Our children are attacking us. Our families are attacking us. The government is attacking us. It's just a constant belittlement, right? Where do we have rest? We have rest in Christ. We have so much peace in Christ. It changes our life when we accept Him, and then we try to walk with Him, right? Think of Him first. What would Christ want me to do? What would Christ do for me? Well, wait a minute. I'm there. How did I get there today to have this person wounded in front of me? Was it freak of nature? Was it just a bad day that I get stuck with this person? Or did God place me there at that time to be the person who can help nurture? And I say many times, if God's putting a person in front of you, it's because God has chosen you to be the one that speaks to this person because that person is willing to hear you. They weren't willing to hear maybe me. They were willing to hear you, and that's why you were placed there. Will you share the gospel with them at that point? That's why you're there. That's why he placed these three people. He didn't send one person. He sent three people to be able to be used as examples. And the third person fulfilled what Christ wanted him to do. It, was, it wasn't by accident. We get the reference points of who, where, and when. You're chosen, right? If we go back to the first section, right? Verse 22. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the, who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. How more blessed can you be that you were chosen? It had to go that way. Or this, this phrase is incorrect. This verse is incorrect. To whom the Son chooses. You've been chosen by Christ for something. You are blessed beyond any blessing you could think of. And yet we don't walk in that. We walk in, why me? Why don't they have? I want more. This isn't good enough. Things should be better for me. Doesn't he know what I do for him? Do you have an understanding of what he's doing for you? Do you have that blessing in your pocket and walk with it daily? Or does all of a sudden that blessing leak out and you have misery. You're stuck with just unrighteousness. I battle all the time with that stuff. I think, man, I should have something a little better I don't understand. Some things that I don't get, guess what? I don't get it. It's beyond my understanding, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Well, if it's all my heart, then it's all my mind and all my strength. If it's not all my mind and all my strength, then I'm missing something. And I'm missing the blessing that I have of Him just loving me. Man, I wanted someone to love me all my life. I felt so lost and alone and empty. And here He is, He's given me eternal peace. All the gifts I've ever thought of having are given to me. Right? The whole of my heart of emptiness has been removed. That's not good enough. I want some more. I want to see more. Show me a sign. And I use this from time to time. Lord, show me a sign. I've been through this. I've been through that. My life has been really hard. You've got to show me a sign that you truly exist. If you had been through what I've been through, you'd need a sign like I need. From the times of the drinking and drugging that I went through, show me a sign that I'm doing the right thing. Show me something. From being homeless to the house that I have that needs so much repair that I don't feel like doing it. I need a sign, Lord. A church that should be filled to the brim. I need a sign, Lord. He's 
said, shut up, you are the sign. <laughs> right? Or we wouldn't have made it through what we went through. Right? Some people are still stuck in the miseries that we've been blessed out of. Right? And we can reach in and show them with his mind, with his strength, right? With the authority of God to walk with us. Do you walk with the authority of God? He's given it to you. You have my authority. You know me. And the only way you know me is because I chose you. So I've chosen you and I've given you authority. Demons run from us. We are the light. Do we walk like that or do we walk like something's really wrong? Right? So many times I fall into that. He doesn't want us walking like that. He gave us the light. He gave us the ability to say, hey, we can remove demons from you. Come, pray with us. Christ will work through us. He's chosen us to do work for Him. Not for us, for Him. To go share that gospel with someone that's not going to be reached. They'll be reached by us. There's so much that we can do on a daily basis to help someone out of the misery that they're in and then watch them do the work. I went and preached at the jail last night. There was a young man there. Man, what a blessing it was. He came in there, and when I met him, he was full of rage and anger. This guy was doing that to him, and that guy was doing this, and he's going to slap this one, he's going to fight the gods, and I'm not going to do anything anybody says. I said, well, that's why you're in here. He says, are you willing to try something different? Are you willing to accept Christ into your heart that you have a God that's greater than any of this that's here? And he said, sure. And he prayed with me. And then I watched things change in him even when he didn't want to. He's been in there six months. He didn't have the right to go to the bathroom. Now he has freedom. In the jail. He's on work release. He's leaving there. He went to go get a job through the work release program that was going to give him $10 an hour. It wasn't enough. God said, I don't want you there. Cut the interview off in the middle of the interview. They canceled the interview. He's freaking out because what am I going to do? I finally got work release, and you're not going to let me have this? I don't know what's going on, God. By the time he got back to the jail, there was a second interview. It was five dollars more an hour, a better job, a better place, and things have changed immensely. He's trying to get his child back in his life, and he's done nothing but great things while being in this in this lockup. Right? He's got no tickets for being bad. Everybody's on his side completely. He reads his Bible daily. He goes to every Bible study that's offered up there. He comes out and he goes to church when he can. His life has changed in a six-month period from being at this God's pit stop we call Belknap County Jail. I don't know how many men I have met there in women that have changed their lives accepting Christ. They're starting, some of the men are starting Bible studies inside. On their own. This is incredible. That's who doing this work. It isn't me doing the work. It isn't any. All I did was go off of the gospel. They accepted and then Christ went to work. They were chosen before they even thought they were in existence. He's doing mighty work up there. It's phenomenal to watch. It's phenomenal to be part of. Look at this little corner we've done in Lakeport. The things that have changed right here. It's amazing to watch. You're all part of that. Do we think of that when the times of trouble are coming? No, we get locked in our own personal troubles, our own issues. It's time to go back to be the Good Samaritan. Think about other people. You take the weight off yourself with the things that are going in your life. The worries, the stresses, the thoughts of I'm no good, I can't, I won't. All gone. Wash them away with the blood of Christ. Become true to the word. Follow what he says. Be a good neighbor. I'll teach you how. Love me first with everything you have. And I will teach you. And he does. And when you see 
yourself in that position. Don't think, oh no, what am I going to do? Think, thank you, Lord. I'll do your work. Fill my mouth. I, I can't think of things to say up here every week. He fills my mouth. He comes up with the things that I wish I, I wish it was me and I could say, man, I've become so educated in this that I can just tell you it's not possible for me. It's a struggle for me to speak sentences, form words. This is incredible. This is what he does. What a blessing. I shouldn't be here. I should be in the county jail. I've been blessed that that's not happening because I accepted him. That's the work that I had to do. That's it. From there, he's doing work in me. And he shows me all the time the work in you guys that you're doing. And then he says, step up some more. Stay out of yourself. Stop fellowshipping with more people. Bring more people to the Lord. Go to more Bible studies. Go to more people in me. Spread the gospel. It's all he has. It's not that hard. I had no problem selling things that were stolen, selling drugs, finding people that would buy and sell and do what I wanted to have done. No problem with that. Will I have a problem with going to find someone and sharing the gospel? I seeked people out deliberately to sell them drugs. I could spot them, they're so bang. I knew I could say, I, I'd be riding down the road looking in every backyard seeing what I could steal. Do I ride around looking around in people's backyard saying, hey, this is someone I can share the gospel with? I had no fear of doing evil. Do I have no fear of sharing the word of God? Is my heart's desire to share that with people, to bring them to the Lord? Man. I hope so. I pray for it. I do the best I can with it. I want to love my neighbor. I wasn't a good neighbor when I was in the other world. I wasn't the neighbor. I was the neighbor that needed the love. But I wasn't given it. Which do you want to be? Which are you now in the times? This, this sped up time of disasters. Incredible. Three feet of rain two days. That's insane. I've never heard of that. It's all coming to a quick end. Grab as many as you can as we're going out the door. God use you to be the neighbor of neighbors. To share that gospel, especially with someone that you don't think is going to be reached. That, I remember going to, going to court. I was in this court. Lynn District Court. Never forget it. it ain't no God in this building. <laughs> ain't no God in this building. All charges dismissed. Have a good day. Wow. I don't know. It was, it was an unspeakable moment in my life. Right? Because where I don't see God, He brought me to be for Him. You are the light. You are the way with Him. Go. Show it. Share it. Love one another. There's many people out there that need us. Need us need us incredibly hard at this point in time. The more we fellowship with each other, the stronger we'll be. The greatest weapon we have is prayer. Prayer night should be stuffed here. Fill it up. If you can't be here, be home praying. Pray with each other. Bring it forward. Amen? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today, Lord. Let us be good neighbors. Let us be overabundant neighbors that can give and give and give and give. Bless this group of people today, Lord. Inspire us to go out and share your word everywhere and every place that we go. Lift us, lift us up. Carry us to where your needs are, Lord, so that we can fulfill them for you. Let our day be about you. What a glorious day when we have and when it's all about you, Lord. If there's anybody out there today that hasn't accepted you, let today be the day, let now be the time. All you have to do is repeat this and truly mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. Lord, you know someone out there that has said that today. Bless them up. 
show them the signs that they're asking for so that they'll understand that you have just brought them into the kingdom. Let us love them up and bring them here, Lord. Show us where they are, Lord. Go to them. Lift us up daily. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.